The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. This is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decides to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was bought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of that debt. At that time, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me. I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he'd found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were greatly disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant! I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you have not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless you, forg unless you forgives his brother from the heart. When Jesus finished these words, he left Galilee and went to the district of Judea across the Jordan. The Gospel of the Lord. Peter thought he was being very generous by, saying that, by suggesting to the Lord, should we forgive seven times? And during Jesus' time, the typical rabbi would say, you can forgive someone three times for a particular sin or grievance against them. So Peter thinks he's being generous. But should, we, should we forgive seven times? more than twice as many than what is suggested. And when Jesus responds and says to him, I say to you not seven times, but 77 times, that number 77 is to help us, to give us an understanding that it's infinite. Because God forgives us an infinite amount of times. There's never a time that if we humbly and honestly go before the Lord, he will not forgive us. But also we can look in Genesis chapter 4, verse 23. And this is one of, you remember Cain and Abel, this is one of Cain's descendants. His name is Lamech. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, hearken to what I say. I have slain a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain is avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy-sevenfold. Ha, ah, so it's just not a magic number that Jesus pulls out. What do we know from the fall? of Adam and Eve. Uh, sin is leashed out into the world, is brought, brought into the world. 
One of the consequences is murder, vengeance, killing. And Lamech, by using that word, seven, if Cain is avenged sevenfold, then himself, Lamech, should be 77-fold, infinite. So the fall brought an infinite amount of vengeance that one could have. Jesus comes to restore the world. And so he doesn't preach vengeance. He preaches forgiveness and mercy. And one of the great gifts that he gives to us uh, to for us to experience that is the sacrament of confession, the sacrament of reconciliation, where we're forgiven an infinite amount of times. I was trying to think this morning, how many times have I gone to confession since my first confession in second grade? I have no idea. I think it's a lot. But I couldn't give you a number. And I have to be careful of presumption, right? We all have to be careful of presumption that we just say, well, I can sin because I can just go to confession. We don't want presumption. But I have confidence in this sacrament. I have one baptism, one confirmation. But many, many times I can go to the sacrament of reconciliation. And so as Jesus allows that, gives me this gift, the sacrament of reconciliation where I can be forgiven... Also, I need to be like Jesus. And St. Paul, his letter in Galatians, he said, until Christ be formed in you. Uh, that's what we all hope, that Christ be formed in us, that we resemble Christ. Uh, that's how we'll be recognized in our death. I recognize you. You look like Jesus. And so one of the greatest ways that we recognize that, that we become like Jesus, that we're formed like Jesus, is in our mercy and compassion to others. And it can be difficult, it can be challenging, there can be a lot of hurt and woundedness, but we're even assured in our forgiveness, we receive healing. Now we can bring healing to others by forgiving them, but we also receive healing. As we continue the Holy Mass, maybe let us think about someone or maybe some people that we still have trouble forgiving and just put this upon the altar of God. Say, Jesus, I, it's difficult for me, but I give it to you. I place it on your altar because I trust that you can give me the grace of forgiveness the grace of love and of mercy. Regina Jenny, let her name, alleluia.